Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending April 5th. First up, here's a cool link to Poland's new battle tank features an invisibility cloak that hides from enemy forces. Now this is kind of cool. It's not an invisibility cloak that's going to make it um, invisible to visible light. What they're doing is by temperature changes on the sides of the tank, they're going to make it invisible to infrared radiation. Uh, it's kind of hard with a noisy tank clunking around, even if for somehow miraculously you could make it invisible to visible light, it would be uh, still kind of hard to hide it from people. But you think a lot of times these tanks are being looked for at nighttime, and the way they're looked for is using night vision, which uses infrared spectrum. So by changing different aspects and different patterns on the side of this, they can park behind trees, um, and change the temperature scheme to where the infrared radiation reflects just the same as the trees they're hiding behind or uh, just random patterns behind bushes and stuff like that. So I think that's kind of a clever idea, really, and probably the more useful way to work on it by using temperature change. It's a lot easier to deal with that and form patterns than to try to make something to uh, cause it to be totally invisible in daylight um, because just I think the, the effectiveness of it, I mean, basically at night when it's still is when you're trying to hide the tank. So if you get a chance to check it out, it's a cool looking tank too. It looks really modern and really stealthy. So I like the way it looks. I'll, I'll, I'm, uh, I'll be showing you some pictures too as I'm talking about this. But um, yeah, to actually um, do it the easy way rather than do it the hard way. I mean, I'm sure we are still working on invisibility cloaks to make things uh, invisible in the regular light spectrum that our eyes can detect. But doing it this way I think is a much more effective way to do it. And uh, they get a cool tank besides. I think it looks really neat. I've been sent this by quite a few people. The last person that sent this in was Smyrna Cowboy Dave Netherton. This is a new motorcycle from Honda called the Voltus. And uh, one of the articles says that they may end up dropping the Voltus name. Now, this was a prototype bike a while back. And I was even kind of halfway thinking when I saw this at first. I'll put some pictures up. I don't think it's particularly that great looking, but with everybody's taste, maybe somebody does um, think it's good looking. Uh, don't really know. Um, but I was kind of thinking it might be an April Fool's joke, too, especially when I read this part of the article, and this is from Visor Down Motorcycle News. This is a project leader from Honda. His name is Kaita Makura, and he said, Honda is a big company. We make every kind of motorcycle. It's great that sometimes we make a certain machine simply because we can and because we want to, not because we should. <clears throat> After that wording, I thought I had to check this article in a bunch of different sources to make sure this wasn't ended up being an April Fool's joke, but... Yeah, evidently it is going to hit the market. And another article here I'm going to give you from Auto Evolution. Um, this thing is ready for sale, and they've even got a manufacturer's suggested retail price of eleven thousand dollars U.S. seventy-nine seventy-five UK pounds. Uh, supposed to get pretty decent seven forty-five cc displacement engine, a small gas tank, only about three gallons, but supposed to get um, sixty-seven miles per gallon. So. Evidently, that won't be too hard to live with that size of a gas tank if, if you're getting that kind of mileage. But, yeah, um, one thing I noticed that a lot of bikers that ride bikes, um, I've heard guys say that they bought a motorcycle that had a color they didn't particularly like, but they say, well, when I'm riding it, I'm not really seeing the color anyway. Everybody else is seeing it. So maybe that will be the effect with this uh, Honda Voltus bike that, uh, if it ends up being a comfortable bike, if it ends up being an effective bike, um, as far as... Uh, you know, for the purpose it's designed, then maybe people will just get that attitude that, like, hey, I'm not looking at it when I'm riding it, but we'll see how it uh, pans out. This next one now, I'm going to have a guest of mine uh, that has helped me out with the TDD report recently talk about this. Um, I've been sent this one, too, by a few people, and uh, this one's Princeton engineers predict Facebook may lose 80% of users by 2017. What they basically do is they put together a study based on... Uh, uh, the way viruses and diseases work and stuff like that, and applied it to Facebook and said that um, Facebook is kind of destined to, to lose about 80% of their users by 2017. What, what I'm thinking myself, and I talked to uh, my buddy Chris about this, and he'll be the one that will be doing the, the feature report in just a minute. I said in my mind I'm thinking that right now Facebook is really gaining in a big way because I noticed about a third of the people that are moto vloggers or even regular vloggers that used to be on YouTube, they seem to be hanging more on Facebook just because of the fact that Google Plus and Facebook and uh, YouTube have been messing up so much, and uh, just sometimes the functionality of it just doesn't work very good. I mean, I've even had problems 
still continuously on being able to post videos and stuff like that just because YouTube's working on something. Um, so now I spend about probably easily a third of my time on Facebook doing the same kind of things I would be doing on YouTube just because Facebook's actually working. But I want to, um, because of our talk and everything like that, I want to I want to give him a little chance to to put his viewpoint for um, put his viewpoint forward because that's what I asked him to do. So take it away, Chris. Hi Chuck. Hi there everyone. How y'all doing? Um, I'm going to attempt to sound as, as intelligent as I actually think I am. Um, <laughs> no. With uh, with this uh, topic. I'm not a big lover of Facebook. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I, I downright despise Facebook. I I opted out of it about three or four years ago. Um, the things that really annoyed me was all these silly games that people were passing around, and the updates, and the uh, you know vlogging from a toilet sort of thing. You know, people people were um, doing updates on you know, oh, I don't remember eating that, and all that kind of silliness. And I had no time for it, so I opted out of out of Facebook a long time ago. Came onto YouTube in search of uh, solutions to problems I was having with a motorcycle, and found the YouTube community. And what I found in the last couple of months is that with YouTube being bought over by Google Plus, and the uh, implementation of Google Hangouts. The social networking side of YouTube has bolstered, whereas before you had a small community of, of like-minded people within YouTube doing very similar things, now you've got dozens and dozens and dozens of, of, of people doing the same thing, maybe even hundreds, I don't, I don't even know the, the number of motor vloggers that there are doing the same thing. But a lot of these people go on to the Google Plus Hangouts now. Uh, which, in my mind, isn't entirely a bad thing. There's an awful lot of uh, people who, who do videos that are displaying uh, acts of dangerous driving, uh, willful or, or reckless endangerment. Um, there's an awful lot of uh, cussing and a lot of, a lot of um, hate and, and things being portrayed in a lot of videos. Thankfully, with Google Plus, where people don't seem to be putting up as many videos on YouTube anymore, that seems to have been contained on the social networking site, which is keeping YouTube more in line with what it started out as, uh, as a, a platform to upload and share videos, rather than a social networking site. So, that's a good thing. What I'm curious about is an article, and uh, I know that um, the mayor has seen this. Uh, this was published in uh, January 22nd of this year on a site called acoustics.com. Um, I'll read a bit of what, what the article says to you. Just like an infectious disease, social networks can spread rapidly, gaining millions of users in a short amount of time, then abruptly die off. It happened to MySpace and Facebook could be next, according to a new study from Princeton University. And the article is very well informed. It goes on to give uh, stats and, and figures, and, and it's very it makes a very compelling argument um, as to why they think Facebook is is going down the pan. Now, talking to the mayor earlier, he says that actually Facebook is booming at the moment because so many people uh, on YouTube who are fed up of, of the screw-ups, the constant glitches and the issues that, 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 that they're having on YouTube uh, and they're turning to Facebook for their social media so as long as YouTube keep, keeps messing up Facebook is getting their customers um, and I think that's interesting because personally I can't stand Facebook but that was my choice to leave it. I, don't, I wouldn't say, you know, let's bring down Facebook as the root of all evil or anything like that. Quite the contrary. 
think we need Facebook, we need MySpace, we need these social networking sites. Let people have their silly games and, and their regular updates if that's what they want to do, good luck to them. Um, so that they don't come on to other platforms like YouTube um, and start bringing all their silliness there. Chuck, over to you. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Chris. And finally, too, I wanted to share this. This is um, Facebook replying to the Princeton study. This is from uh, this particular one I'm going to post. is uh, I've seen it in a few places, but this is from the Daily Mail. Facebook hits back at Princeton study, claiming it will lose 80% of its users within a year, telling university by the same calculation it will have no students by 2021. They actually use the same exact techniques that Princeton used for them and what Facebook's future is and applied them to Princeton. And yeah, according to their own study, using it the same exact way, by 2021, Princeton won't exist anymore because all the students will be gone. And finally, um, I would like to not just promote our Facebook page again with the Dumpster Divers. So any of you that are on Facebook, you're more than welcome to join. We've been having some issues the last couple of weeks. We've seen a lot of people attempting to join, but then when any of the admins or myself go to add them to the page, somehow they've been disappearing. It seems now as of uh, about three days ago to be working correctly again. And we're growing in membership. I think now we're about 127 or something like that and still growing. Thank you very much. And if you get a chance, um, join our Facebook page if you're active on Facebook. But if you need to, I will put the contact page for the creator and the administrator of the web page, Sarah Kellett. Or you're more than welcome to PM me if for some reason you can't get in and join. It's an open group. And basically, we had it set up originally to where we didn't think anybody would have to be approved. But whatever, we're dealing with the situation. But yeah, if for some reason you've tried and you can't get in, either PM me here on YouTube or get in contact with Sarah Kellett and... That will be posted in, posted in the link below. So that's it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.